This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. And I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, the trial of a Stockton Springs mother accused of killing her three-year-old son has been postponed for one week. R.A.J. Douglas has all the latest. The lead attorney for the state has tested positive for COVID-19, which prompted Justice Robert Murray to pause court proceedings. Jessica Williams stands accused of killing her three-year-old son, Maddox Williams, back in 2021. According to police records, the child suffered a fractured spine, bruises, broken teeth, bleeding in his brain, and other injuries. Williams is also widely known by a different alias, including Jessica Trefeffin. Court officials confirm the trial will resume October 17th. In studio, A.J. Douglas, ABC 7, Fox 22. Meanwhile, Waterville Police Department's HOPE program is one of many ongoing efforts to combat the opioid epidemic. Our Matthew Jaroncic has more. Just the fact that they walk through those two front doors, the first thing I always say is how I'm proud, how proud I am of them. Waterville Police Department's Hope Angel Beverly Fairchild says she's encouraged every time she sees someone suffering from an opioid addiction seeking help. She's part of Operation Hope, or Heroin Opiate Prevention Effort. Operation Hope Coordinator Robert Bully says Hope Angels work with the police department to combat the current opioid crisis and support those seeking recovery. It is the part that actually is helping place and get people um, into treatment facilities. Um, and then the other parts we have is education and enforcement. Um, but it's a very valuable one because it affects not just the person with the addiction, but it also affects the families. Um, so it's, it's making a, a big difference in that factor. Started in 2017 by Richland Chief Deputy Joseph Massey and Waterville Deputy Chief of Police William Bonney, Operation Hope has been embraced by the Waterville community. Uh, they both noticed that, hey, we're enforcing um, the laws and, and we're getting drugs off the streets, but at the same time, we have a lot of people who are being affected by the use of the drugs and that the community is greatly affected. It starts right here with this phone call, where a phone call is made to a detox center before being put into detox houses like right behind me to fight addiction. It just warms my heart. It just warms my heart seeing the sense of relief, knowing that there's a plan, that they have a plan to get help. It can be a day or two before we can actually get them into a detox facility because of a shortage of beds. At one point during the pandemic, Operation Hope coordinator Robert Bully says he and his team had to overcome many obstacles. Even through COVID, which was a hard time because we couldn't do, you know, our different uh, Operation Hope fundraisers, um, but we have made it through with uh, different donations from the city uh, and or from businesses. Although the state saw a record number of overdose deaths last year, Fairchild believes that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Nine times out of ten, the answer is going to be, I want to change my life. I can't do this anymore. Well, you know, at the end, when they leave, it's just that, again, they have a sense of relief and knowing that help, help is on the way. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. The Kennebec County Sheriff's Office has issued a silver alert for 71-year-old Michael Holmes of Vienna. According to Maine State Police, Mr. Holmes was last seen on foot leaving a residence on Tower Road in Vienna on Thursday. October 6th, on that, that happened on October 6th with plans to go to Winthrop. He has not been seen by family since. Police say Mr. Holmes does suffer from cognitive issues. He's a white male, six feet tall, 225 pounds, with brown hair and blue eyes. Mr. Holmes does not have his cell phone on him, and it's unknown what he was last seen wearing. If you see him or have any information, you're asked to call 911 or the Kennebec County Sheriff's Office at 207-624-7076. Well, authorities are investigating the discovery of human remains in Acadia National Park. Acadia National Park Public Affairs Assistant Nate Parkinson says the remains were found last week. He says although it's not a criminal case, National Park Service Rangers and Maine State Police are investigating. We'll bring you any updates as they become available. 
Maine Republicans addressed concerns over rising heating costs today. During a press conference, Republican legislators criticized Governor Janet Mills and Efficiency Maine for the 2019 incentive program, which provides rebates and financial assistance to purchase electric cars. The 2019 initiative also authorized the expansion of public charging stations. Legislators spoke in opposition to the program by arguing that funding is geared toward wealthy Mainers and saying the funding should instead go towards helping those struggling to keep up with heating oil costs as winter approaches. Democrats argue efficiency programs like that one are taking steps to ultimately decrease heating costs. The Mainers in Piscataquis, Penobscot, and, and all of our counties that are struggling already to pay their heating bills. We have a large increase in the number of applicants for heating assistance. Up to over 20,000 people have applied. These oil prices are because of a supply and demand problem that's out of our control. We need to diversify and reduce our demand here in the state of Maine. We need to do it nationally if we're ever going to get control of these prices. Republican legislators are proposing to reverse and even end policies that they say cause electric costs to rise. Well, Maine lobster fishermen have hired a former high-ranking U.S. Department of Justice official to represent them in their case against new federal laws intended to protect critically endangered North Atlantic right whales. The Maine Lobstermen's Association is appealing its case against the new rules to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. District Court. The group said Thursday, or Tuesday rather, it has hired Paul Clement, who previously served as U.S. Solicitor General from 2004 to 2008, to represent them in the case. Clement said Tuesday the new fishing restrictions have pushed the industry to the brink of collapse. He says the case could ultimately head to the Supreme Court. Maine has a new Teacher of the Year. Ninth grade social studies teacher Matt Bernstein from Casco Bay High School was chosen as the 2023 Teacher of the Year. His selection was announced during a surprise event this morning. Teachers of the Year are recognized for a commitment to teaching excellence and nurturing the achievement of all students. They spend a year of service advocating for students and teachers and speaking to the importance of education in preparing Maine students for the future. So obviously a very, very uh, important recognition there and really cool to highlight all the, the wonderful educators and really all of the finalists for that competition as well. Yeah. Uh, it takes a lot to be recognized like that. I think one of the great things about Teacher of the Year is regardless of who wins, it really does shine just an extra spotlight on the work of educators, mm -hmm. how important they are to students, not just in terms of their education, but teachers so often go above and beyond and help students on multiple levels. Right. And I think that award just really highlights how important they are really to the community and to everyone. Yeah, and they face a lot of adversity these last few years, too. They certainly have. Well, taking a look outside, we had a gorgeous day. We're definitely being spoiled yeah. so far. Let's get a first check of our forecast. All right, thank you very much. Your first weather is brought to you by GRF Real Estate Company, 29A Belmont Avenue in Belfast. And okay, so for us, look what we did. 27 this morning in Bangor, also Millinocket. That's not normal. A hard freeze this morning. But then we kicked in a south wind, and that gave us a boost in temperatures throughout the afternoon, eventually landing in the upper 50s for highs today. But tomorrow, we're going to go for low 60s across the area for tomorrow with plenty of sunshine. Lots of clear skies out there now. There's a few clouds our north. Those will stay there this evening. We are in a dry stretch of weather into the weekend. Our forecast then tonight, though, is mostly clear skies and low temperatures, not as cold, down near 40. Your full forecast is coming up. Alrighty, hopefully more brisk temperatures on the way. Mm -hmm. All right, well, coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, the League of Women Voters of Maine issues a user-friendly voting guide ahead of the November midterms. And rebate, a, a rebate program aims to help Mainers stay warm and manage their heating bills this winter. We'll have those stories and more as ABC 7 News at 6 continues. Mainers took Jared Golden at his word, but he just broke his promise. Golden was a deciding vote for Biden's newest spending bill, even though he knew reckless spending would make inflation worse and everything more expensive. What's worse? Golden and Biden hiked taxes a billion dollars on those making less than 50000 Jared Golden, independent when convenient, liberal when it mattered. Congressional Leadership Fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need tractors rated number one in durability and owner experience so you can do it all and do it right. 
Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut, and Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% 0 APR for 48 months, plus save up to $1,100. Jamar Construction Products in Bangor continues to grow to meet our customers' needs, supplying products for site work contractors, concrete contractors, and survey and safety supplies. We are proud to be the local dealer for Hilti, Valley Blades, U.S. Fabrics, and Euclid Chemical, plus so much more. Stop by and see us at 1270 Hammond Street or give us a call at 907-4491. If you dig it, pour it, plow it, fasten it, lay it, or lift it, Jamar Construction Products can help you. Jay Leno live in concert. Researchers at Washington University report that 100,000 years from now, the average size of the human head will greatly increase. They say the larger the head and the larger the jaw, the more sexually attractive people will be. So I am 100,000 years ahead of my time. That's right. Saturday, October 22nd, Collins Center for the Arts, Orno, Maine. Tickets on sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com. In Maine, it's always buying season. And at Thornton Brothers in Lincoln, we carry new Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Rams for your buying season. Here at Thornton Brothers, we'll help you find the right vehicle specifically for you to suit your lifestyle. As they say, the proof is in the performance. So come on over and test drive a real vehicle from a real dealership or place your order with us and see why it really is buying season here in Maine. Thornton Brothers, Main Street, Lincoln. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everybody. A new easy-to-read voter guide is now available thanks to the efforts of the League of Women Voters of Maine. Those who log on to vote411.org will find examples of sample ballots, how ranked choice voting works, and information on in-person and absentee voting. Jen Lancaster with the League of Women Voters of Maine says her organization is a nonpartisan political group that strives to make voting more accessible and understandable for all who cast a ballot. We'll see this is what a yes vote means, this is what a no vote means, so that you actually know what will happen depending on which way that you vote. So we want people to understand that, of course, there are the really big races, but there are also those really important local races like town council, city council, school board, and those decisions can greatly impact where you are. Well, the League of Women Voters also plans to distribute tangible copies of the voter guide to local libraries so more voters have access to what will be available on this year's ballot. A two-decade-long legal battle has ended after a judge ruled in favor of a $187 million settlement over mercury cleanup in the Penobscot River. The settlement requires Mallinckrodt US LLC to pay for mercury remediation methods. According to the Maine People's Alliance, the plant, located in Orrington on the banks of the Penobscot River, released tons of mercury into the river over a span of several years. Maine People's Alliance and Natural Resources Defense Council initially sued Mallinckrodt back in 2001 to advocate for cleanup efforts. Jesse Graham, began, Jesse Graham began working with Maine People's Alliance in 1999 when the lawsuit was filed. The organization's co-director says Tuesday's ruling is just the beginning. A much cleaner river, uh, surely a much cleaner river. I don't know as we'll ever get it. Um, clean, uh, but I think that we're really excited about the the ruling and that this this will go forward. So, um, you know, this will restore the river. The chlorine plant was ordered to pay at least 187 million and up to 267 million dollars to an independent trust that will fund and implement restoration of the river. Mallinckrodt spokesperson Mark Robinson sent a statement saying in part, quote, We are very pleased that Judge Woodcock has approved the settlement. The parties reached the agreement after thorough and thoughtful discussions, end quote. 
Well, temperatures are dropping, and we all know it's going to get a heck of a lot colder. Now there's a special rebate, rebate program that will help Mainers stay warm and manage their heating bills during the upcoming winter heating season. Efficiency Maine has a limited time winter prep rebate, which will reimburse homeowners and tenants up to $100 toward the purchase of select weatherization and insulation products, including weather stripping, spray foam sealant, window insulation shrink kits, and foam board insulation insulation, among other items. The details are available on the Efficiency Main website. They also have a downloadable flyer providing winter energy saving tips. It's great to highlight the, the ways that we can uh, try yeah. to reduce our energy bill. Know those can get really uh, high and, and rack up quickly during the winter months. Well, and you know, some of those tips might surprise people at how simple they are. Mm -hmm. You know, it may not, they may not all entail doing huge projects. Some of them could actually be relatively easy to implement. You just don't know about it until you read. I used spray foam in a previous apartment. Yeah. It was the first time I've had to do anything like that. So I was a little weary, but it was really simple. Literally just spraying in the cracks and it, it seals it right up and it made a big it. difference. But yeah, it really helped. Alrighty. Well, still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, a couple in Clinton puts their quilting skills to use for a charitable cause. And in sports, our Tyler Cruz sits down with Michael Keim, head coach of the new Penobscot Pioneers hockey team to discuss his role and what to expect out of the new girls hockey team. We'll have that story right after the break. Janet Mills' education department was teaching kindergartners radical transgender policies. Now it's pushing a curriculum telling students they're racist if they use certain terms. All lives matter. Mass incarceration. Calling the police on black people. All racist. Janet Mills closed our schools and our kids fell behind. And now she's pushing her radical education agenda. No more politics in schools. No more Janet Mills. The top funder of the main Republican Party is the Republican Governors Association. Your representative has your back. Who's he kidding? Jared Golden votes with Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden 83% of the time. The result? A war in the middle class. The worst inflation in 40 years. Sky-high energy prices. Drugs pouring over the border. And Jared Golden just voted for 87,000 new IRS agents to hassle the middle class. Jared Golden doesn't have your back. He has theirs. The NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Joe Biden and Janet Mills are working together to crush Maine families with rising costs. Mills and Democrats' radical plan targeting gas and home heating fuel will raise Maine's gas tax by up to 40 cents a gallon. And Mills' new tax on food and household essentials will increase monthly grocery bills by nearly $60. End the Biden-Mills crush on Maine families. Stop Janet Mills. The top funder of Maine Families First is Thomas Klingenstein. Janet Mills, false attacks on abortion, trying to hide a failed record. Mills, giving taxpayer-funded benefits to illegal immigrants, driving up home heating and electric bills, even handing out crack pipes as overdoses and crimes surge. Paul LePage will bring Maine back, help lower inflation, electric bills and home heating costs, legal requirements for welfare, and a growing economy. Let's, Let's move Maine, Maine forward. forward. I'm Bruce Poliquin, and I approve this message. I've been lobster fishing for over 25 years. These out-of-state groups that are funding Jared Golden, they're hurting us here in Maine, and Jared Golden isn't doing anything to stop them. There's the Jared Golden you see on TV, and then there's the Jared Golden that votes in Congress. He's so focused on getting elected that he's lost touch with what matters here in Maine, and we need someone to fight for us. Unless he leaves his party, there's no way Jared Golden can do anything to help Maine. I don't think Jared Golden's a bad guy, but he isn't a good congressman. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Body Graphics Tattoo and Piercing Studio. Visit us at our new location at 27 Bangor Mall Boulevard in the Mid Mall, 478-7856. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. I am here with Michael Kime, new head coach of the Penobscot Pioneers. Michael, thanks for coming with us today. Thanks for having me. Um, so. Just to start, how does it feel? The first varsity hockey girls head coach north of Winslow. How does it feel to be a pioneer, both literally and figuratively? Well, I've been a fan of Denver University since Jim Montgomery was there, but it's great to have pioneers on the East Coast here. But no, it's a great opportunity uh, to have to be teaching women how to play the game, and and just it's it's awesome to have this here. 
Denver University, did you catch a game this weekend with Maine? I, I did not. It was, it, I was watching the Greta Van Fleet concert, and then when I looked at the end time, I, I was a little bummed out, but that's okay. That's it, was, uh, it was good. I mean, scored 3-1, to one, but we'll, we'll get, I digress. We'll get back on topic here. Um, when you saw the opening for this head coaching job, what made you want to throw your name in the hat? Well, well I, was, I played hockey here uh, since I was a kid, and I had a lot of uh, teammates that were women. And in high school, there were a lot of women that were on a lot of teams, and I, and that would have been an awesome opportunity for them. When I saw the opportunity, I got really excited. I talked to the misses, and she said I should go for it. And uh, I had other others around me saying that I should go for that opportunity. And I put my name in the hat, and I'm just happy that uh, I was selected by the local ADs to lead these women. I'm looking forward to it. Why do you think you are the uh, the right man for the job? Why do you think they threw their vote of confidence in your favor as well? Well, I think what helped was my experience in head coaching uh, from from the prep high school, but also with the local Bangor lacrosse team that I coached there, uh, developing trust with the players, organization with practice plans, and being able to uh, develop more rounded people, because uh, that's where I start with. If we make better people first, then the player will be, will be easy enough to fix. But uh, I think that my experience with uh, being in the MPA and traveling and having a flexible schedule was also a bonus as well. You were at John Baps behind the bench, right, as an assistant hockey coach? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was an assistant coach uh, with Andy Stevenson and Chris Tannis. Uh, Andy and Chris taught me a lot about how to be, how to be a coach, and and uh, and just that experience. I'm going to be taking into this group here, and I think that if it works, let's keep that going. Were there any were there any girls on that John Baps team? Just out of curiosity, and are they coming over to play here? The uh, at the time when I was coaching over there, we had uh, we had two. We had Kira, who was an edit, and um, and uh, oh shoot, uh, Kayla, uh, Kayla, who was a defenseman. I don't know if there are any Baps players that are be coming over, but I hope that they do. I hope that the women in the league come around here because this we could really make a really good push for this season and really surprise a lot of teams. That was going to be my next question. Have you have you met the team yet? And what are your expectations? Your initial impressions of the group? I I haven't met the team yet. I've I've been talking a lot with. Uh, uh, with coaches that have worked with the players in the summertime and I'm hearing a lot of really good things very coachable athletes very good very good athletes in in general uh, I want to see I want to see what they're what they look like for the next couple of days uh, on November 7th to the 9th and then uh, working and developing a system that works for the team awesome and then just last question what are your next steps in the process after after being selected just a couple weeks ago um, well, I've been I've been dusting off a couple of the books just to try to brush up my brush up on my teaching skills and and whatnot because I always think it's good to review the knowledge that you have. Also, uh, we're going to be wrapping up some hires with my staff because it's not just me. Uh, we're going to be having staff that are really going to be uh, giving up their time to develop the women that we have here to really make a run at this thing. Awesome. Those are all the questions I had. Anything else you wanted to add? Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm good. Awesome. That is all the time we have for sports. Here is your full five-day forecast. Here we go. Your full weather is brought to you by Thornton Brothers in Lincoln by a newer used Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram vehicle from us today. You make the drive, we'll make the deal. And okay, so a cool start to our day today with a hard freeze across pretty much the entire area with low temperatures down in the 20s. Oh, kind of frosty, right? But then that south wind kicked in. We had a couple wind gusts today near 25 miles per hour, and that gave temperatures a boost up near 60. Not quite as 60 here in Bangalore or Millinocket, but overall, we'll get temperatures back in the low. 60s for much of the area tomorrow. Okay, so walking through tonight with that south wind locked in place this evening, we'll likely have low temperatures not as cold. We're going to hang out near 40 tonight, and then tomorrow we're going to have a nice recovery. A couple of you could easily go for 70 tomorrow. That's not normal, right? Uh, with that gusty southwest wind kicking in. Okay, so there's no advisories tonight, no freeze advisories in here because we'll have warmer temperatures this evening with lows hanging out near 40 tonight. So your house plants are just fine outside. All right, so lots of clear skies across the region now. There are a few clouds to our north. Those will likely stay there tonight. We are in a pretty good stretch of weather now for a couple days, uh, looking good tonight and throughout the day tomorrow. There is a system over here. That's our next cold front. That's going to mess with us 
us on Friday, and it could be here just in time for the football games on Friday night, uh, ending early Saturday morning. So overall, if you're heading to games Friday, uh, likely needing a raincoat this week with that. Okay, so going forward, uh, it's been a drought year right across the West again. Uh, decades of drought here. For us, though, we've been kind of chasing this all summer long, right? We've had dry weather across our region, and we could use some rain and a little bit of snow. And there is a little bit in the forecast for us on Friday, but that's it. Maybe a quarter to a half inch of rain on Friday afternoon. Our forecast then tonight, though, is mostly clear skies. Some dense fog is likely as the air goes calm and temperatures meet the dew point near 40. Uh, it's not going to be as cold. Cold, though, and that wind calm wind out there as well with low temperatures near 38 for tomorrow. Okay, so partly cloudy. I went with 67 tomorrow, but easily a couple of you could go for 70 through the afternoon with that south wind around 5 to 10. That could get a little gusty. We could see wind gusts near 15 to 20 tomorrow afternoon. And then looking ahead, your five day forecast shows the story. So tomorrow, 67. Okay, we'll take it. Thursday, 64. That's about average this time of the year. Low temperatures in the 50s. Friday, there's that chance for rain likely getting in here Friday afternoon into early parts of Saturday morning with temperatures in the 60s. Then Saturday and Sunday looking pretty good to me right now with high temperatures in the 60s and lows in the 40s. All right, so a pretty routine week pretty nice. coming our way. Yeah. All righty. More to come after the break, so stay with us. Find meaningful work in behavioral health. I discovered that I could help others. And you don't need a degree. You don't need prior training. They train you on the job. So it was perfect. Learn more about compassionate careers at caringforme.org. I have a great job. I get up early, head on out, and I get the work. I install solar panels. They power our homes and give me a great paycheck. When Paula Page was governor, he opposed projects like this, putting Maine last for solar jobs in New England. He even said that climate change wasn't a threat to Maine. Look, we need more of these jobs, and that won't happen if we go back to Paula Page. The top funder of Better Maine is the Democratic Governors Association. Do you have leaky pipes? Are you planning a plumbing job? Is your heating system working right? Are you designing a plumbing project? Then contact Harley's Plumbing and Heating Plus. If your toilet will not flush, Harley will be there in a rush. Furnace bit the dust today, Harley crew is on the way. Harley, plumbing, Harley, heating. 990-2200. Call now. Harley! Call or visit online. At Home Kitchen Bath and Flooring in Dover Foxcroft are proud members of the Flooring Network here in Maine. We have our flooring installers on staff ready for you and your custom flooring project. With over 50 years of combined experience, we'll work with you from start to finish, including demo and cleanup. Backed by the Flooring Network's state-of-the-art warehouses, we have a massive inventory to provide you with the best value and fit any flooring budget you may have. So stop in, meet our flooring experts, and see what we can do to make you feel at home. Seniors know a scam when they see one, like Bruce Poliquin. My heart is breaking for our seniors in Maine. He says he'll help Maine seniors. But the last time Poliquin was in Congress, he voted to cut $500 billion from Medicare. And he supports raising the retirement age for Social Security. Maine seniors can trust Jared Golden. Jared stood up to both parties to protect Social Security and Medicare. I'm Jared Golden, and I approve this message because Maine seniors earned their retirement. Find meaningful work in behavioral health. I discovered that I could help others. And you don't need a degree. You don't need prior training. They train you on the job. So it was perfect. Learn more about compassionate careers at caringforme.org. Welcome back. Finally tonight, a Clinton couple is using their quilting talents to provide warmth and comfort to complete strangers. Jim and Fran Posick say they love creating and donating their handmade blankets. And as Jody Hersey tells us, Jim just completed his 1,000th quilt for charity. The pieces, the front, the back, and the batting, and I assemble them. It's called a sandwich. I put a sandwich together. 
79-year-old Jim Posick is a veteran and former mechanic who loves working with his hands. Most days, you'll find him in his basement quilting. Using your brain and being physically active has been something I thought about to stave off Alzheimer's, dementia, whatever. You need to use your brain to keep it busy. It's Posick's mechanical mind that gave him the idea to computerize his long arm quilting machine so he could make more blankets in a shorter amount of time. In the last three years, he has successfully completed 1,000 quilts. Number 1,000, which is right here, I still enjoy looking at the pattern coming out. Jim's wife, Fran, who is his biggest fan, is also an avid quilter. Oh, it's like a quilt show every day. A thousand, that's amazing. People that quilt for a living do not produce that number of quilts. The duo's handiwork is all donated to the Somerset Samplers, Quilts of Valor, and Project Linus, all organizations that help others. Because like my daddy said, you can't live somewhere and not give back. You can't just take, you've got to give back. In Clinton, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22. That is an Olympic feat. Yeah. I mean, my gosh, a thousand quilts. Yeah, and to see the size of them too. They're, yeah. they're not like anything They're small. not teeny they're, tiny, they're, they're, they're big, yeah. And not just the size too, but the, the quality and design. You can tell there's a Beautiful lot colors. of thought yeah. that goes into every single one of them. A lot so. of thought and a lot of heart right there. Yeah, so Already. really, really cool to see that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us, folks, from everybody here at ABC7 News. Take care and have a great rest of your night. Good night, everyone.